Pope, Mark here with Excels. I hope you're all well. So um, we've asked this question many times in the past and um, just had the question again underneath our last video. And that question is, um, the Excels seem to use um, blunt weapons to, to train with. We don't use feathers. And is there um, a reason uh, why? So I've made some notes and I just thought I'd quickly um, finally commit to an answer on this. Um, so we don't. We don't use feathers. Um, we exclusively use uh, blunt swords um, that are you know, reasonably accurate, they've got good weight, realistic balance, um, or as much as you can have for, for a blunt weapon. Um, you know, they behave in a very similar way to a sharp in terms of centre percussion and uh, point of balance, blade stiffness, things like that. Um, I've made some notes because I, I don't want to ramble on too much. And I also don't want to say anything that's going to get me into too much hot water um, here. But um, yeah, the Exiles are kind of known for our sort of jokes and memes um, <laughs> against uh, modern feather use. And um, I can assure you it's all very much tongue in cheek kind of stuff. Um, you know, feathers are you know, legitimate, well, in their original form, uh, they're you know, a legitimate training tool. Um, some modern designs are a bit light and a bit flippy and a bit bendy, <laughs> but we'll get to that uh, in a minute. Um, but they are legitimate, they do have an historical basis. Um, you know, us having a bit of fun with people who do specifically fury with feathers, um, as I say, is very much tongue in cheek. But there is, uh, ironically, um, some some historical precedent for making jokes about people um, who use uh, feathers. Uh, we know that um, the Brotherhood of St. Mark uh, in the 16th century were saying things like um, other guilds who were training with feathers, um, they would make fun of them and, and they would say things like, well, those guys are great at fighting with feathers, but they're not so great at fighting uh, in reality. Um, and it's, it's, it is believed the term um, Feather fencer um, was a derogatory term aimed at people who were who were using feathers as well. But as I say, that they are a legitimate training tool. <coughs> you know, in the modern age, we you know some clubs use wood, some clubs use synthetics. It really depends on your aims and objectives. Um, so, without all the sort of joking aside, um, I'd like to address just a couple of reasons why we don't use feathers. Um, across our clubs uh, while we never have um, and um, hopefully that will then put to bed this whole question of why the exiles don't use feathers and indeed why we like to poke fun at people that do but as I say it's, it's, it's all in jest okay so uh, as I say I've written some notes because I don't want to sort of waffle on but um, before we get into it firstly a feather okay I, I don't need to be too exhaustive here um, people know what they are um, they're training swords uh, we see um, them in use from at least as far back as the 15th century. They sort of really gathered uh, steam as a, as a training tool in the 16th century, um, arguably as uh, sort of training with long swords started to decline due to the prevalence of other weapons, um, such as rapiers and so on and so forth. Um, uh, they sort of become, uh, long sword become less of the norm. Um, and uh, we know that they were used right up until the 18th century, possibly even later, um, before obviously the sort of modern resurgence of HEMA. And, and now they, they tend to be used quite a lot. Um, the use is probably a bit late for Fury. Um, and there's no direct evidence that Fury used feathers or any of his students did um, either. So no direct evidence, um, you know, and I'll just underline direct evidence there and, and sort of leave that one uh, for, for a future video. But in terms of the manuscript there's no suggestion that feathers were used or anything like that and there's very little suggestion that they were uh, kind of prevalent exactly when fury was around teaching um towards the end of his life but obviously you know earlier in his life when he was he was practicing um as as well i remember he was teaching for a long time so um if you want to look at more about these as training swords as i say i, I would imagine 99 100 of people watching this video will know what a feather is um, but if you want to look at them in terms of their historical use uh, you might find it more productive to to, um, to search for the term feather or uh, fecht feather, um, which I had to look up there due to pronunciation <laughs> uh, and not feather schwert, um, probably pronouncing that wrong, uh, because that's a modern term, okay? And uh, you, what you'll get is a lot of references and articles and videos and stuff from today. So if you look at them historically, um, then, then don't use the term feather schwert, okay? Cool. Um, so, uh, right, back to my notes. So um, so we don't use feathers. Uh, we never have. Um, they're not part of our sort of standard equipment list. Um, there isn't one reason, but there's lots of sort of small reasons. So I'll go through some of those now. Um, 
Reason number one, uh, there's no evidence that Fiori used them, okay? And there's there's very little uh, direct evidence that they were sort of a common training tool in that period um, either, okay? So that's, that's sort of reason number one, very straightforward. Uh, number two, um, modern fetters, I believe, they can be too bendy, too whippy. Um, there's rightly with them often a, a very heavy focus on safety, so people want good flex and they want them to be safe in tournaments and things like that. In my view, that goes a little bit too far um, with how much flex has been asked of these things uh, in some instances um, and there is or there seems to be a trend back towards um, sort of stiffer heavier uh, feathers um, you know that are not too light and bendy um, uh, which uh, which arguably will give people the upper hand when they're doing tournaments and things like that if you've got a slightly heavier slightly um, uh, sort of um, uh, stiff feather um, you'll you'll I mean, certainly with our system, you'll have the upper hand when it comes to things like winning the centre line and and employing the point. If it's very light, very bendy, uh, you don't have that mass in the blade. It's very hard to dominate the centre line, especially with things like posta longa. Um, your covers can tend to be a bit woolly because you're not getting that the firmness of that cover in the bind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, as I say, there there does seem to be a bit of a trend towards a slightly thicker, slightly sort of stiffer, heavier, uh, sort of tip heavy uh, feathers, which which is which is obviously great to see. Um, but in my view. Um, coming on to point three, uh, they don't, as a general rule, and I know there's lots of different types, just as with blunt, you know, blunt swords, there's lots of different types, variations, manufacturers, materials, there's lots of variation with feathers, there's just as much, if not slightly more, arguably, than there is with um, with the common types of blunt longsword that we would use. Um, but they don't behave, behave like we need them to. So with our system, uh, when we're doing fury, you know, some of the actions that we're doing, specifically things like beats um, and breaks, breaking of the thrust, if I'm thinking of a play, um, you know, uh, feathers do not behave like we would need them to. They're not stiff enough. Um, they don't carry the mass at the, towards the end of the blade like we need them to. Um, and they wouldn't last very long, to be honest with you. They'd bend, potentially break, um, but you wouldn't get the kind of action that you need. If you're doing a high break, let's say someone's doing a fenente type action, you're doing a very high break against their weapon to then come in with the point. That is a lot less reliable when you start looking at trying to do it with a feather. Um, that's just one reason of many, um, but um, but that's that's another reason. Sticking to my notes, um, so uh, reason number four, uh, while people would argue that the that feathers handle like a blunt sword, uh, in my experience, that's not actually the case um, at all. Um, I will openly admit, though, I haven't tried lots of feathers. I haven't tried um, some of the some of the newer ones. Remember when we started, when I started, that you couldn't really get feathers. I mean, we were basically looking at um, a good quality reenactment blades. So, you know, I, I will openly admit that these things have evolved in, in much the same way as training blunts have um, that uh, have, have evolved as well. Historically, we can see that supposedly feathers behaved like sharp swords, like real swords. Um, I... I <laughs> There's no way to know, really, um, if that was the case, to be completely honest. Um, I haven't handled any, you know historical examples um you know if people back then were saying they handled like the real thing there's either two things going on they were sort of talking bullshit um or or historically they were stiffer and heavier than what we're using today <laughs> so um or, or or a combination of both and, and i do think it's probably a combination um, of of both Reason five, um, consistency. So uh, we can't have a mixture. So overall, we feel that blunts are better for what we do and how we do it. Um, if we were to say that feathers were acceptable across our clubs, we would have a mixed match. We'd have loads of students with blunts. We'd have loads of students with feathers. Um, we'd have a mixed match. And, um, you know, and that, that right now is, would, 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 be, um, would be quite challenging um, as well. Um, okay, rule, not rule number six, reason number six um, is a little bit of fear, okay, so, you know, in the exiles, we're still pretending with our blunts, we're quite open about that, um, you know, we're still recreating a martial art with blunt weapons, um, but they hit hard, you know, and, um, and they behave, in my view, a lot more like um, we would expect a shark to behave without being sharp so in terms of the stiffness of the weapon in terms of how how that weapon interacts with your opponent's weapon and all, and all the other bits and pieces um you know with these things if you walk into a thrust from a blunt sword um as we use them and i'll come on to that in a second or the types that we use um then you're going to feel it okay we're still conscious of safety of course we are um but how we train and why we train um we want people to feel what it's like if they're walking into a thrust we want people to have at least a little bit of 
you know, cautiousness about, you know, uh, thinking that doubles are acceptable. We want people to feel that they're being hit, not get damaged, not get hurt, <laughs> you know, uh, but we don't want... Um, we don't want our sparring, our free play, our pressure testing to basically turn into two-handed uh, uh, epee, basically, uh, two, two, you know, or two-handed foils or whatever. Um, and we we find that with the with the blunts that we use, because of the types of blunts that we use, you know, people are more respectful of uh, being suicidal. People are, you know, less. Uh, it's less acceptable that doubles are on. You know, we don't have such a big issue with that as you might see if we were practicing with feathers, where I openly and often say it can kind of descend into to a bit sort of stick fighty you know there's without that at least a little bit of fear and at least a little bit of this is probably going to hurt then i find that it tends to introduce certain falsehoods into the kind of training that we do and that again is is just not what we're after um basically um so that's a bit of a whistle stop basically those are the those are the sort of main sort of reasons if you like there's no one particular reason um uh, you know, they're just not right for what we do um, with other systems in, you know, with other systems in other contexts. I totally get it. Uh, a feather is going to be a better training tool than the blunts that we use. Yeah, it's just not right for what we do and how we do it. And I believe the system um, that we do either. Um, but, you know, if people are training for to be competitive in competitions and stuff, they're safer. I, I get all of that. Um, I also totally get, you know, as I've, I think I've mentioned with with blunt long sword um for training you get shit ones and you get good ones just the same as you do with with feathers um as well so you know it's not always a sort of you're not always comparing sort of apples for apples feathers of course come in all sorts of shapes and sizes as i've um as i've said so for us um it's something we'll always keep under review of course um i'm very conscious that there are some very good feathers out there uh, these days um uh, but for us right now it's simply just a case of horses for courses basically uh, blunt long swords you know, good ones, and I guess we'll do other videos on what we think constitutes as a good one. Um, then, you know, things like Albion's and things like that, we're after uh, as good as we can get realistic blunts, yeah, without actually being sharp to the point where ideally you would just, you know, I know it's a bit more complicated than this, but if you gave them a sharp edge, you know, you could use the same sword, just give them a sharp edge and you've got yourself a sharp. That's ideally what we're looking at practicing with, uh, with that weight, with that, uh, how they behave, how they flex, you know, and, and all the stuff that I've just mentioned. So it's simply just a case of horses for courses. And that is the reason why we don't use feathers. Cheers.